back to the belts. Kevlar and pregnant, they're not going to stretch. Um, the only thing that's going to happen to a belt as far as wear is this groove is going to get deeper over time. It's going to get wider over time. I don't, you guys probably can't see this groove. But this groove is right down the middle, and it's where the blade sits. Um, what happens right off the bat, and right off the bat by a few hours, is that groove turns from a triangle that you see here into a U. That's roughly the shape of the blade. It's like what I like to call the comfort zone of the blade. Nine times of the ten is going to stay there. But it's going to wear over time. So you're looking at roughly three to five blades out of one belt. It's a long time. I'm talking about hundreds of hours before you have to deal with it. Sometimes longer. <laughs> um, and what you'll see when it's time to wear, two things. First one is you're going to be cutting on your saw, and the blade's going to stall a little bit. It might stop. You can hear the saw running, but the blade stops. Or it's going to do that in and out. Um, your, blade, your belt's starting to wear out. So you take it off. Take a look at the groove, that Kevlar that I'm talking about. If you take a look at your saw right now, you can probably see the Kevlar in the middle. It's kind of copper, kind of a reddish orange color. You're going you're gonna to look in that groove. You're going to see that copper color. That's time, it's time to replace your belt. Um, you can run it as, you can actually run it as long as you want until the thing won't move anymore. But why would you want the headache? Um, it's time to pop these off. They're not that expensive, especially for the amount of time that you have to, um, that they last. Um, now back to that. A belt's not going to stretch, so the way a belt is, the way a belt's going to stay. That's going to lead us to our next most common problem, most common problem number two. That means tight tension. Okay, when we talk about tension, normally when we talk about a saw, we talk about bandsaw tension. We talk about tensing that blade so it stays in position, um, and that's adjustable. Um, with us, it's a, it's a static tension is what I call it. That static tension is the diameter of this ring. That's where those raceways are that everybody loves. That backward C that you see in the saw looks like a backward C. Can everybody see that? We set that tension by setting that diameter. I call it static tension because it, it's fixed tension. I don't call it static tension. I lied. That's a fixed tension. That's a fixed point. It stays that way unless something happens to it. <coughs> static tension is in the spring tensioner plate. So forget what I said the first time. That's in a spring tensioner plate. Now, a lot of people again say, OK, my belt slipping, my blade slipping, I'm having trouble. Let's push down on this thing, and let's tighten it in its position. So now it's no, no problems. You don't want to do that. Because all that's accounting for is the movement of the blade. If the blade pushes in, this thing will move up a little bit. If something gets caught and bounces inside that belt, this will jump up. And that, that keeps the blade from breaking. You push that spring tensioner plate down, you crank down the screw. Anything happens, anything falls in there, you're going to snap that blade because it's got no place to go but broke. Hey, that was like a movie. OK. So we're going to talk about tension. Um, there's loose tension and tight tension. Those are both problems. Loose tension is not so bad. Um, you'd really, really have to put a ton of weight on this thing. I'm talking about the upper part to uh, cause too much tension or, or, or loose tension or literally do it on purpose. Lack of tension. Loose tension is what I call it because it's easy. Lack of is too many words for me. OK. We're going we're gonna to talk about a different saw. Well, there's oven there. You know, an oven is it's, it's ridiculous. You start talking about oven, nobody knows what you're talking about. What were we talking about? Oh, what? See, I'm confused. No. OK, we're going we're gonna to talk about the Taurus II for a quick moment. There's still a lot of them out there, so you guys still might have to do um, a lot of repairs on those. Loose tension is, is, is its Achilles heel on that, that Taurus II. Different type of material, susceptible to weather changes, things like that, extreme heat, would actually cause the Taurus II to sag, causing loose tension. Because of the way we make our blades now, loose tension is not a big deal. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't change the way the saw runs. And, and why that is is because the saw, the saw blade holds its own structure. The saw blade was made round, it stays round. Back when we made the Taurus twos, we had, again, that really thin blade that the naked bearing is for, and thinner blades that had less structural integrity. They, it would squeeze that blade. That blade would pop out. You couldn't touch the saw without having that blade pop out. So we had to address loose tension um, to address that problem. You're not going to really have loose tension with these. Um, just because I learned a lot more, we learned a lot more, and we make the saws better. So when we build these saws, if the variance is so small, we talk about this diameter. Um, we're only off by a couple thousandths on every saw. Um, and I'm pretty proud of that, because this is all done by hand. We do all this by hand. We have our own fixtures that, that um, set this thing in the right position. Um, but it's only a few thousandths in the saw that make a difference. Uh, because everything's set, everything's ready to go, everything's a circle. It's a circle on top of a circle on top of a circle. When you deal with perfect circles or the hope that you have perfect circles, everything needs to be right on. 
So it's only a few thousandths or a couple millimeters, something like that. It's going to cause trouble. So we're going to address loose tension while addressing tight tension because we're really concerned with tight tension. Tight tension is going to be, this is, this is the fun part too. This is what I do over the phone. It, it, this is how you address tight tension. This is how you find out. Go ahead and rotate this drive gear right now. If, if I'm not mistaken, everybody rotates this thing. It's pretty easy. You can move with your thumb and forefinger. Nobody's breaking a sweat. It's pretty simple. We would rate this on a scale of 1 to 10 as far as ease of turning. If I take off the belt and I rotate it, that's a 1 because it's simple. There's nothing holding it back. If I um, put the belt back on and I rotate it and it's pretty easy, it should be between a 4 and a 6. And I'll describe it because everybody's got a different idea of, of what's what. A four and a six is you can rotate it relatively easy with your thumb and forefinger and you feel slight drag. You feel that belt pulling. A 10 would be this thing doesn't move at all, which would be like if you put your belt on wrong or if your motor burned out because it, by that time the belt's melted to the saw, so it's not going anywhere. An eight or a nine is also something you want to deal with. It's happened. I've seen saws melted down to, uh, there's no raceway. It's just a glob of stuff and um, it's happened. Okay, so oh, let's address tight tension. We get in our saw, it's aligned perfectly. The uh, motor's parallel, everything's great. The saw is sweet. We even put in some water, we tried it. It ran like a champ. We sold it to our customer. Customer calls up and says, you know, I ran this thing for 10, 15 minutes and it's really, really hot. I can't even turn it off. I had to go to the switch and pull, off, and pull the plug because it's so hot, I'm afraid to touch it. Has everybody had that or heard of that? A lot of people haven't heard of that. You're supposed to say yes because it's a big thing. There we go. Everybody's heard of this. This is just, whoa, man, better. Okay, this will come up. It, it will come up. Um, I'll deal with why it comes up in a minute, but let's, let's fix it, okay? So now we've got this thing with tight tension. We can barely move this drive gear. We've got our customer waiting for us. We want to look good, so we want to do this fast. We're going to adjust tension. This is a one-time deal. You adjust it, it's done. If you adjust it wrong, it's not done. You've got to do it again. But if you adjust it right, man, watch out. Okay, so look at your parts list page again. I'm going to sneak a peek at this one because I can't remember which one it is. Okay, the new saw without the naked bearing is going to call these 11A and 11B. Okay, everybody find 11A and 11B. Those are motor mount screws. The old parts list page isn't even going to mention them. So look at your new one. Everybody found those? I'm going to stay here guys, screwdriver, because I want to make sure that this will work for everybody. I'll give you an idea. Everybody, everybody's located those pretty much? No. 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 Well, if you have the old saw, you, you, you can't adjust? You can. It's just that they weren't called anything at that they time. They just weren't identified as 11A and 11B. This, is, this was just done before to make my job harder so I'd learn more. It's 11A. Describing that. Let's, let's do this. Let's describe it like if we were on the phone. This is the drive gear. You have one screw, Phillips head screw on the upper left. We'll say. 10 o'clock, and another Phillips head screw on the lower right, and that's at some o'clock, I'm not sure. No, it's about 5 o'clock. I knew that I was just messing with you guys. Okay, everybody found it? Because everybody told me where it was. Loosen those two screws, a couple turns a piece, just like we did on the other thing. Okay, we've got it. We've got it pretty loose. We don't have to. These should be kind of tight. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear cuss words trying to get these because they should be really tight. Or okay, we do it right at now, time. let's all just make sure, we, let's make sure we got our, our new parts list page because it's going to make it a lot easier. That's why I gave it to you. Okay, the new one doesn't have the naked bearing. We had 11A and 11B. Now we're looking for 17, 18, 19, and 20. Raceway adjustment screws. It's because that's what they are. Uh, I want you guys to loosen. 17, 18, and 19, leave 20. Reason for leaving 20 is, okay, you can't get a screwdriver in there real easily, and you can do this without it relatively easily. After you get those done, I want you guys to stand up because you need to stand to do this. Or do it while you're standing up. Plus, I want to see how many people are taller than I am. So that'll make you leave. You're gone. <laughs> you're gone. You're all taller than me. Okay, sit down. No, I'm kidding. 